to access the files for this tutorial, visit the apmonitor.com website, uh, go down to the optimization course, and then on the right hand side you'll see a dynamic optimization link in the in the link of lecture notes and you can download these files. So the files we'll be working with are in the MATLAB folder. You can see some of the functions that are there. We're going to start just first of all with the model. Now this is just an exponential decay model with uh, dx dt equals negative k times x. And so we just need to return the derivative value. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is develop uh, ODE function call to be able to solve this model. Okay, so I'm going to do ODE 15s. That's a normal way to call it, but I have an extra parameter that I'm going to be sending in, which is my k value. So I've got to modify that slightly. My actual value that I'm going to have is 0 0.08. My guess value is going to be 0 0.05 for the k value. So we're going to compare those. We're also going to add a little bit of noise there. And then I'm going to plot the resulting difference between those two. Okay, so the one with a k value of 0 0.05, another one with 0 0.08, and then I'm going to plot those. Okay, so what I do is now go to here and, and uh, type in my sim with different values of k. And you can see that the predicted value is getting a little bit better agreement and uh, this is what the solver is going to do. It's going to be searching for a k value to make these two line up. So what I need to do for my solver is first of all to find an objective function. The objective of what I want to try to minimize to say that this is a good fit for my model. Okay, so I'm going to call my ODE15S again. Again with the extra parameter there I need to modify that. It's a little bit funny syntax there. Um, but just have the third uh, argument there after my model is k. And then I have some measured values just like I had previously. So I'm going to add noise to this, the analytical solution to that differential equation. And I'm going to see if I can recover the solution. And so in this case, I'm going to sum up the, uh, the difference between model and measured and square that. Okay, so now I'm going to also program a, this, uh, this confidence interval. So I'm going to solve this graphically first. And uh, what we want to see is is the sum of squared errors as I change the k value. And uh, to get my confidence interval, now I, I can get a value for k, but in order to get a confidence interval I can use an f statistic. And uh, here I'm just program programming in an alpha. That's my confidence interval. And then I have to have the number of parameters and number of data points. And then I calculate an upper bound on my sum of squared errors that's away from my optimal value. And uh, then we're going to look at the confidence interval for that k, as well as the estimated value. Okay, so now I have a. Uh, I'm going to run this script, and I'm going to run it in debug mode, and just kind of step through it and uh, let it get down to figure one. And then I'm going to go ahead and plot uh, this. Let me rearrange the size just a little bit so we can see. And um, we've got the uh, as a k value on the x-axis and the objective function on the y. You can see the minimum there, right around 0.08. And this is my confidence interval right here. So it says that my confidence is between 0 0.075 and 0 0.083. That's the 95% confidence interval for that k value. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is uh, go back and uh, also let fmincon or fmincsearch estimate this parameter. Let me start with fmincsearch. So I have my objective function, my initial guess value of 0 0.05, and I'm going to display the results and then plot it as well. Now with fmincon I can put in constraints on that as well. So fmincsearch I can't use constraints, and then I'm going to run this, and uh, let's just see what it, what it estimates for those k values. So we saw from the graphical approach it was right around 0 0.08 and uh, or just a little bit less than that. That was the minimum of that objective function contour. Okay, so I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and step through this. You can see as it's guessing these new k values, I'm, I put my mouse over the k value and for each iteration that I'm debugging and stepping through here. And you can see it guessing. It's getting closer to 0 0.08 and it's going to converge just slightly less than it. The noise term that I added in there caused it to be just a little bit less. But I can see the plot now. Now it matched up very well, um, you know, graphically, and also minimizes the sum of squared errors. So let me go through, and I'm going to do this with fmincon as well. Uh, it's going to be a very similar result, not exactly, but um, you know, we're solving this numerically, so there's going to be just a little bit of difference, but very similar results with fmincon. Okay, so that concludes this tutorial with MATLAB.
Dynamic processes and the differential equations that describe them are found in many places, math, science, business, engineering. We're going to go through four examples here, one in Excel, another one in MATLAB, yet another one in AP Monitor modeling language, that's with the MATLAB toolbox, and then again in AP Monitor with the Python toolbox. We'll not only solve these equations, but also show how to do dynamic parameter estimation or dynamic optimization.